go ahead and turn off our floor plane since we're already oriented. Now let's talk a little bit about resolution. We're in our tool menu right here, so if I scroll down a little bit, you're going to see we have a geometry menu. I always get in the habit of holding down shift just to open up multiple menus, so I just open up the geometry menu here. And if you want to open up multiple menus, hold down shift before you open the menu up. And right here at the very top here, you're going to see we have a divide button. If we click that, you're going to see our object kind of melts a little bit, but we do have a dynamic S, we have, a, not dynamic, we have an S div slider right here. So we can go back to subdivision level one, and then we have subdivision level two. And you're going to see essentially what that's doing is if I turn polyframe off and then on again, you're going to see we have faint lines in between that. So we're getting more geometry per face. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to hit control Z a couple times just to get back to the, where we started. I'm going to go down here to the very bottom, and where it says initialize, I'm going to change X res to 1, Y res to 1, Z res to 1, and then hit Q cube. So now this is just one face per. I'm going to go back up here under geometry. I'm going to turn off this SMT. This is the subdivide smooth modifier. Uh, that's what's causing the vertices to kind of melt. So I'm going to turn that off temporarily. We're going to hit divide. So every single time I hit divide, it's taking one face and dividing it into four. If I hit divide again, and we turn polyframe off and then on again, you're going to see each one of these faces divided into four. Hit divide again, turn polyframe off and on again. Each one of these faces is now divided into four. We now have added subdivisions and we have subdivision history here. So we go down to one. Here's more geometry, more geometry, and more geometry. So why is more geometry helpful, especially in a program like ZBrush? Well, if you're sculpting in ZBrush with like say your standard brush, so we'll switch back to your standard brush, B, S, T, and you sculpt on this subdivision level four surface, you're going to see we're deforming the surface. If you hit, keep hitting control D, and that's the hotkey for divide. If you hover over this, you can see control D is divide. So as I hit control D, it's going up and up in subdivisions. Now be careful with this. If you see up here in your active points, it's pretty low. ZBrush can handle millions of polygons, even billions if you want to, but it does have a limit. So as I keep hitting control D, you see we're on subdivision level eight. We've got 98,000 active points. And the more times I hit control D, the finer the detail is. So see when I start sculpting on this, how nice that surface is. If I take the subdivision slider and I drop back down to like subdivision level four, you're gonna see it's a little bit rougher. It's a little more aliased. Let's go to subdivision level five. That's a little better. Subdivision level six, pretty good. Subdivision level seven, even, even better. Subdivision level eight, even more detailed. Now I can still go above here and you can see where it still looks aliased. You can sculpt on that, uh, the higher subdivision levels and it's actually gonna be uh, even smoother. So this isn't normally how I subdivide a surface. I usually have smooth modifier on. The reason I turned it off is just so you can see the face is dividing. So let's undo back. Let's keep hitting control Z or let's turn on our polyframe here and we'll just drag the slider back to where we had our original cube here. So now if we turn the smooth modifier back on and I wanna go ahead and get rid of all of these subdivisions above it. So I'm gonna hit delete higher and now we're just back to just this one subdivision here. Uh, if I hit control D or hit the divide key, you're gonna see it turned into like almost a sphere. And that's because when I divide each one of these in the faces, it wants to average those vertices between them. To demonstrate this a little bit better, I'm gonna go under here. So this is, we're dividing up and we're getting real geometry. We're getting real subdivisions. We have a subdivision slider through here, right? If I undo that, we're just back to our cube here and I go down here to dynamic. If I hit dynamic, you can see we have smooth subdivision set to two. It's giving us a preview of what it would look like if we hit control D twice. So instead of adding real subdivisions here, we're giving it fake ones. And if you turn that off, it goes back to our cube. If we turn it on, it goes back to what it would look like if we subdivide that two times. Now this is super powerful. And when we get into Z modeler a bit more uh, in a minute, we're gonna go even more in depth, but I'm just using this to illustrate essentially what it's doing. So I'm gonna go back to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, and I'm gonna turn dynamic off. If you hover over this, you're gonna see, or maybe you don't see, uh, shift D, turns it off and then D activates it. You can hit always yes. So you can toggle out that off between shift D and D. And again, we'll get more into this later. So if we do shift D, you're gonna see we have a, a cube here. Now, if I hover over an edge, hold down space bar, go to insert multiple edge loops. And then we just click once in the middle here, click once in the middle here, click once in the middle here. You see I've added more geometry. So if I go to the side here, and I just, again, you're navigating and you're rotating around, you're gonna hold down shift and snap to the side here. We're gonna turn on divide, and you're gonna see it's, oh, I'm sorry. You can hit divide and it's gonna subdivide our object, but instead what I'm gonna do is under dynamic and I turn on dynamic just to get a preview because I can just toggle that on and off really quickly. And you're gonna see it's not per turning into a perfect sphere anymore because we've added more lines. 
So if I turn on dynamic, you're going to see it's averaging the vertices between here. Let's turn that down to smooth subdivision level of one. So this is what it would look like if I hit that divide key once. So if I turn that off, you're going to see here's my corners. And then if I turn on dynamic, if I subdivided, it would make, give me more divisions. Every single face would turn into four, but the vertices between them are going to average because we have that smooth modifier turned on. And in this case, it's being represented dynamically, not real, it's just a preview with the dynamic and then smooth subdivisions. Now, if you want, if you don't want to see it as if it was subdivided with uh, smooth turned on, what you can do is you can change that to zero. And then this flat subdiv over here, if you hold down control, you're going to see this is the same thing as if you were dividing with smooth modifier turned off. So if you change this to two, you're going to see it's going to divide your faces, but it's not going to average any vertices. Generally speaking, if you're subdivision modeling, it's going to be smooth subdivisions. Now I am getting a little bit ahead of myself here, so we turn dynamic off. I just want to demonstrate what edges and subdividing mean together and how these components work together. So what we can do is I can hover over an edge. Let's do insert single edge loop. So hold, okay, hover over an edge with the Z modeler brush BZM, hold down space bar, go to insert, and then down here, change that from multiple to single. And then when you click on this edge here, you can click and drag this and push this anywhere. So now if we kind of put it in the middle and then we hit D, you're gonna see that this side has a nice soft fall off and then this side's a little bit tighter. You can also hover over here and you can see as we hover over, there's a representation, kind of a visual representation of if we do Shift D, that goes back and turns dynamic on and off. So we can turn that off. You can see if we hover over here, we can kind of see that a little bit. So if you go down here to this edge and you click and you drag, you're gonna see as we add another edge, it's hardening that surface. If we turn dynamic off, you're seeing as we add more edges, it's containing these shapes because as it's subdividing, these vertices don't really have anywhere to go. Over here, they got plenty of space to go. As this one, as this divides into four faces, this vertice right here is going to go way in. As this one divides into four faces, this vertice is only going to drop a little bit. So to demonstrate this, let's hit Control Z, go out of dynamic. So we've got these faces here. Let's grab this edge here and we'll pull up a subdivision here. We're going to hit D. And you can see we're just tightening this corner compared to this corner. And in fact, if you want to, you can just keep adding more edges here and then adding more edges here. And you can see we can really tighten up the shape on the side. And then again, if we turn dynamic off, you can see this is what we're doing. We're adding basically essentially control edges to control this shape and determining how sharp those fall offs are as we're subdividing our mesh. Now, one thing I just want to mention is why subdivision history is important. If we hit the comma key, go to tools, let's go ahead and grab that demo head, drag it out of your canvas, go into edit mode. Let's turn off polyframe for now. Let's go down to geometry. It already has three subdivisions. Let's go down to subdivision level one and then delete higher. So if we hit control D, that's going to add a new subdivision and we can start sculpting. So, you know, we have our primary forms. We're going to go through here and start sculpting our secondary forms. We'll hit control D one more time. And now we can start adding more details. And if we keep hitting control D, we can go through here and just add more and more and more details as needed. In fact, I'm just gonna put some really small details on him. And what's cool is we can go back down to subdivision level one. Since we have subdivision history, we can drop down as low as we want. Let's go into solo mode here. And I can move this out. And then if I go back up, you're gonna see all of our detail followed. So this is like a low res cage that we're moving around and then this is our high res detail. So when we get into transposing objects, animating objects and blend shapes between layers and stuff, having the ability to go down to a lower subdivision is gonna be huge. And a lot of times, you know, we'll build up our shapes or our forms, even get pretty detailed using, you know, DynaMesh or Sculptures Pro. But usually what I'll end up doing is zero meshing a low res cage, projecting that detail back, and we'll get into this later, just so I can have the flexibility of a low res and high-res detail that are connected together using subdivision history because it's a really useful thing to have.